I think I just witnessed a killing at Lowe's. This chaotic scene erupted mere moments after Freddie Nelson and his wife Carrie arrived at the Delta Park Lowe's in Portland, Oregon. What may have started as an explosive argument rapidly escalated, turning deadly in the blink of an eye. Oh, the security guard just shot my husband! About seven months before this appalling incident took place in September 2020, 49-year-old Freddie Nelson, a home renovator and woodworker, was stopped by two security guards after he'd loaded up his truck with wooden pallets taken from behind Lowe's. The guards worked for the Cornerstone Security Group, which provided armed security and was hired only to patrol the parking lots of Delta Park. While it's unclear what happened prior to the security guards' body cam footage being turned on, Freddie can be seen trying to leave. You sit here see shaking, you're looking for a fight, man. Whatever. I can already tell that the adrenaline's pumping through you. You're ready. You're balling up your fists. I get it. I see it. You I'm know, balling up my fists. Hold me. my keys. You want to fight. You just. So you know what? I'm and so you're you, trying to I'm agitate you right it. Right now. And you're Don't trying to fight. agitate it. You're trying to agitate it, right? I'm going to take you down. You're trying to agitate it. Do you understand right? me? Huh? Do you understand right? me? You're trying to agitate it, right? Okay, at this point, my question. Do you understand, do you understand me? what he's saying? I do. Okay. Good. So, so are we done here? We, done? we are done. Get in your vehicle. Leave that to park. Hey, look, I'm getting in my vehicle. She don't need to you're tell talking, me. To. You're talking to me. Okay. Get in your vehicle. Don't be giving orders. Get in your vehicle. Get in your vehicle now. F you. I got to go to work anyway. That's right. Go, go to work. Go to Kirby Avenue and stay on this side when you come back. Whatever. Could you please move so you're not blocking the road, a public road? One of the guards parked the red vehicle you can see in the footage, and it blocked Freddy's ability to leave. You want to keep going, bro? I'll get out. You. No, Mike. I'm, I'm not. Step back. I'm not dealing with jail okay. You understand? Can you Step just because you're mad at me here, and do not give me the attitude. Well, I'm, I'm going to apologize for that. On his side like that again. So that I can get out of the situation. Do you understand? Don't do that. The guard eventually moved his vehicle so Freddy could leave. But this was just the beginning of the volatile incidents between Freddie and the Cornerstone security guards. In January 2021, Freddie was once again approached by two guards. They saw that he had collected more pallets and had left his red and black truck out front while he went inside the storm. All right. We can wait here. Out on this? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, I know we've had this problem with him before doing this. So yeah. I think it's time to boot him off. Because we keep telling him. Are you saying you're excluding him? Yeah. Okay. Because I know that in the past we've told him not to do that. We okay. keep telling people not to do that. So other guys have been excluded now. Yep. Bigger, he's excluded. Yep. Man, you're not supposed to take pallets. Look at all those pallets. I know. While the guards waited for Freddie to come to his vehicle, they took a look at how many pallets he'd taken. While they seemed to be under the impression that Freddie didn't have permission to take the pallets, this wasn't the case. We're going to tell him, take those pallets, take them off site, and don't come back until January, what's today, 15th? Yep, January 15th, 2020. That's right. Freddie had been collecting pallets from Lowe's for a few months at that point. I know you've kind of had trouble with them in the past, haven't you, a little bit? You know? He doesn't, yeah. We've spoken at Kirby Avenue a couple times. He really doesn't like us. Well, he's not gonna like us right now. Nope. But yeah, no. I'd rather do a show of force on this guy than not. It was at this moment that Freddie exited the store. What's up? So, um, we see that you're taking pallets. Yeah, I just didn't talk to the manager. Okay, so here's the problem. It's a property rule violation. So this has nothing to do with Lowe's. Okay. Uh, we are going to ask you to go ahead, take these pallets off for now, but the problem is because of multiple property rule violations in the past with other people doing it, we're having to enforce it to the point that we're not going to let you back onto Delta Park Center property for the next year. Okay? Well, oh, I'm not allowed right now? Um, yeah, we're going to ask you to leave. Like I said, you can take these pallets, but uh, yeah, we can't have you back on Delta Park Center property for the next year. Whatever. 
Take it up with loads. What was that? Take it up with loads. No, sir. You can take it up with uh, the property owner of Delta Park Center. I'm with Brian. Know him by name. Okay. While this incident ended without issue, things would only escalate from here. What no one could have predicted was just how explosive things would become. On April 19th, Freddy was once again stopped by a security guard while he was behind Lowe's, about to collect more pallets. No, you leave this property now. You leave the property now. No. Okay, whatever. Okay, turn around. I'm going to put you under arrest. No, you're not. You want to bet? No. You are under arrest now. No, I'm not. I just came out of the office. Nope. Yeah. You are trespassed from the Delta Park property. You are not to be here. I just came out of the... Uh, I don't care. Well, go deal with them. I'm not. I'm dealing with you. Yeah. Well, I'm not under arrest. You will be here in a second. What's your name and ID number? You don't need it. <laughs> so I don't even know you're a legitimate security officer. I am a legitimate security officer. How do I know? Because you... I'm right here. I you work for Delta... You're right, I can. But I work for Delta Park. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You work for TMT. Same thing. No, it's not. It is. They you don't are not allowed to be park. here. It's not working. You are not allowed to be here. Whatever. You need to leave now. Just go talk to management. No, I'm not going to. An incident report from a week before this footage reveals that a security guard spoke to the Lowe's manager and confirmed that the company Freddie worked for was actually contracted to pick up the pallets. Freddy even showed the business card to the guard and the manager. The report claimed that the pallets were supposed to be picked up in a truck with the company logo, which Freddy's truck didn't have. Regardless, it seemed like the guards knew he had permission from Lowe's to be there, and yet were still telling him to leave. Okay, hey, whatever. Ed, you need to leave now. I got work to do. Leave. As soon as I'm done. No. <laughs> you don't even know the rules. I do. Yeah. You are trespassed from this property. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and turn around. Stay on, mate. If you're not arresting me. You want to bet? Back off. You want to bet? Go ahead. I got the same thing you do. Yeah, well, then back off. No, not going to. According to the report later filed after this dispute, the guard claimed that Freddie had a small can of pepper spray in his left hand. However, the footage shows that the can appears to be in his right hand. The guard stated that he then pulled out his own pepper spray for self-defense. You're not arresting me. You want to bet? No. Come talk to management. No, I'm not going to. Yeah. It's time for you to leave. Freddy then began walking back towards Lowe's. It's time for you to leave. You are trespassing from this property. You're going to be the next one trespass. No, I actually am not. I need you out here now, please. I I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that. I need you out here. Can you call the police then? Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be arresting Freddie here. Yep, I need I need I need PD out here now. I'm, I'm behind Lowe's. Yeah. While Freddie headed into Lowe's to get management, the security guard aired his grievances to a bystander. He's he's trespassed from the property and he knows it. So. He's not gonna come back here without police. So. I'll tow it. Watch me. Oh no, that, this is what he does. Oh, you know what? Yeah. The incident report from that day states that the Lowe's management did ultimately ask Freddie to leave, but said that they would figure everything out so he could get pallets later. It appears that despite the security guards trespassing Freddy, the Lowe's management still expected him to come and pick up pallets. This would become very important later. The report also claimed that Freddy was trespassed on April 12th for allegedly stealing pallets, while other footage showed him being told he was initially trespassed in January. More discrepancies would come up soon. While the continued clashes between Freddy and the security guards were certainly distressing, things would only intensify from here. Once again, Freddy was approached by two guards, this time while he was in the front parking lot at Lowe's. Go! Get off the property! 
You need to get off the property. Go. You want to play that game? Okay. You can be here. You did nothing. You can't be here. Yes, you have. You've been excluded from Delta Park property for one year. You're now trespassing, sitting in the property. You are not supposed to be on Delta Park property. One, you've helped somebody get away from stealing. We have that documented. You took a pellet. We have that documented. We have you on camera several times. We have you documented. You're not a vendor. We've already talked to him. We've already talked to him. So either you need to leave or you're going to handcuffs. You decide. You want to play that game? Okay, get out. Okay. Then, okay, let's call PD. Officer. Officer. What's up? I gave you my name. Yep. We have bolos out even for you. So the security guards did in fact have a be on the lookout for Freddy. The bolo shared with the Cornerstone security guards stated he has attempted to state he is an approved vendor for Lowe's, regardless if he is or isn't. He is not allowed in Delta Park Center. Notably, while the bolo says that Freddy can be hostile, it clearly states that he's not known to be combative. The bolo also directs the guards to place him in custody if he does not comply with orders to leave the property. Everything came to a head on May 29, 2021, when Freddy parked in the Lowe's lot with plans to look at flowers with his wife. Within 30 seconds of parking, and before the couple had time to walk away from their truck, they were approached by a cornerstone vehicle. The security guard stopped partially in front of Freddy's truck, and an altercation immediately began, one so dramatic that witnesses nearby started filming. 28-year-old Logan Gimble, the cornerstone security guard, confronted Freddy and Carrie, telling Freddy that he was under arrest for trespassing. Freddy apparently argued that Logan had no authority to arrest him. While this part of the argument wasn't filmed, Logan turned on his body cam soon after, capturing the rest of the harrowing incident. Off my property. You know you've been trespassed. You know you're not supposed to be here. You refusing to leave my property? I told you to leave property. I told you to leave property. You've been trespassed and warned multiple times. I called the police. Get the out of the vehicle now. You already tried to hit me once. You move this vehicle again, I will fire. Logan immediately shot four times into the windshield of the truck, fatally wounding Freddy. All of this occurred in less than a minute after Logan turned on his body cam. In the immediate aftermath, a witness to the horrific event called 911. I think I just witnessed a killing at Lowe's. I told 
told you, he tried to hit me. Why'd you shoot him? Because he tried to hit me with a vehicle. Ah! That is a soul with a deadly weapon. Do you call me my blood? You killed my husband. Are you on the authorities with them right now? I'm on mine with one right now. Told them that he's been trespassed I, multiple times. I watched you. I watched you. Okay. We all watched you. Yes, he's shot. Yes, we definitely. I see blood. Yes. He's 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 bleeding out. Okay. Do I, I do they want me to render aid? I don't know what to do at this do you, point. Do you want security to render aid? Do, are you on medical? What what do you want him to do? <laughs> I'm I'm right here standing by. My cam my camera's on. Everything's been recorded. Yes, he just okay. shot my husband. I used to do. Oh my okay. God! Ah! She's hysterical and rightfully so. Yes. He told you. Yes. He, 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 I shot him four times because he tried to hit me with the vehicle. They're they're on the they're on the authorities with him right now. He locked his door. He tried to hit me and pin me between the vehicle. Oh, Ma'am, do you have a key a key to get in the car? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Give me a key. Right away, Logan begins repeating his version of events, but there are some key specifics in his story that will be challenged later. He pulled his gun and he said, stop, or I'm going to shoot you, and the guy tried to run him over again. He, he tried tw two separate times. Yeah, I know, and he's got it all on his camera. Take care of your husband. He also attempted to pepper spray me. He what? He also attempted to pepper attempted spray. Attempted to pepper spray oh, the cornerstone. Oh, get in. Oh, is that what that was? He yeah. shut out the window? Yeah. Yep. Notably, Logan doesn't mention that he first pushed a bottle of pepper spray into the partially open back window of the Nelson's truck and attempted to spray the couple. He's He's been trespassed by me, every security member on my team. He's been trespassed by the police and he's been trespassed by the owner of Delta Park. So, did you hear all that? And he continues to yeah. come on property. Okay. While they wait for the police and ambulance to arrive, Logan makes a few questionable comments, seemingly talking to himself. God, I did not think I'd have to do that. Of course, they're gonna they're gonna sympathize with the victim. I think his wife is on the phone screaming. I know, I know you're I know you're trying to help. I just want to make sure that if there's anything I can't do. They they they're apparently two paramedics. Okay. It's this is out of my scope. I'm just yeah. trying tried to try to pin me between the vehicle right here and then tried to hit me right here again. About five minutes after the shooting, officers arrive on the scene. I don't know what you need me to do. This is the first time I've ever had to do this. Just have a seat. Okay. Oh, I had to had to discharge my firearm. Logan claimed he was the site supervisor responsible for all of Delta Park. He then told officers that Freddie had attempted to hit and pin him between his own security vehicle and his truck. The officers instruct Logan to call his supervisor and he once again relays the same story, this time emphasizing a notable detail. He angled the car for me and tried to floor the gas, and that's when I fired. In the middle of the officers checking Freddie for signs of life, Logan makes this request. Uh, is there a way I can get tomorrow off? So I can, you know, process what the I just did. Okay, I, I, know, we're, I know we're tight, but... A few minutes later, an ambulance also arrives. Oh, Freddy, I love you! Eventually, an officer guides Logan to sit in the back of a police vehicle. I did not think I'd have to do that today. After leaving Logan alone for five minutes, the officers return to collect his firearm. Hey, bud. How's it going? Uh, go ahead and sit by the car. Is that cool enough back there for you? Yeah, it's a little warm, but it's all right. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your firearm. You okay. don't have to touch it, okay? Yeah. We're just gonna wait for the texts and stuff. So it's okay. just kind of protocol when yep. somebody's in the back. Yep. So it doesn't say you're in trouble or anything like that. Yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm okay. aware of the process. There's a weird thing with my DPST. I got armed during the whole COVID thing. I mailed my stuff off okay. and I have yet to get my actual card. Don't worry about it. But I do have the, the gold paper or the yellow okay. paper that was issued to yeah, Don't worry about it. As it would turn out, this was an issue that Logan would need to worry about. The day after the shooting, he was brought in for a formal interview where he was read his Miranda rights and agreed to speak with officers. He tells them that he was in the Air Force for six years. He was then asked to describe some of the things he dealt with working as a security guard. So would you say that you've been able to resolve a lot of situations 
using uh, just verbal, either verbally saying stuff to yep. people or the escalation. Use it. It's a lot of time. It's you know just being calm, rational. But if you're talking about the individual I dealt with, he was he's been a problem for us for a really long time. I was going out driving around doing my patrols. And this guy, his name's Freddie. Uh, he's been trespassed from our property before. He's been trespassed by me. He's been trespassed by members of the security team. He's been formally trespassed. I think the police, we had to get the police involved at one point, and they went over there and formally trespassed him. And then he was trespassed again by the owner of Delta Park because how the whole incident started was like months back, uh, my guys were chasing a shoplifter out of is either marine fishermen or dicks. I think it was marines, actually. The dude stole a bunch of like knives and other tools. This guy, Freddie, drove by, opened up his car, and let the dude hop in that we were chasing, and then peeled off with him. And so that's why we, we know, that's where the trespass started. Along with the other security guards, Logan had several prior verbal disputes with Freddie and had banned him from public areas about a month before the shooting. He would go into the back of Lowe's and he would steal a bunch of pallets from them because he has a little pallet company. Um, but they had no formal agreement with him at all. He had no okay from the manager. I, like, I went in and verified with him. Carrie Nelson, Freddie's wife of 30 years, was interviewed the same day she witnessed her husband being shot. And she told a very different story than Logan. But security has a personal beef with us. It says that we're stealing them, but we have permission. So they've been harassing us for like a month and a half now. Mark Wilkins, the property manager of TMT Development, which managed the Delta Park Center, stated in an email that Freddie was not an approved vendor authorized to remove pallets. He also said that he spoke to Freddie and told him he was not approved, but that he was only trespassed from private property owned by the landlord, not from public areas. In contrast, Logan claimed he'd banned Freddie from public areas about a month before the shooting. Everybody, most of the managers know us in there. So you have a contract with Lowe's to take the the, pallets. the spare pallets and, and use them for your own? No, we sell them. You sell them? Yeah. Okay. Where is the contract at? Do you have that with you or is well, it? We do have, it's just a verbal. Verbal contract. Yeah. Do you know who you have the verbal contract with at Lowe's? Oh, she works in the bag. I don't remember her name. Adding to the confusion, police spoke with Lori Sugarbeer, the receiving manager at Lowe's. Oh, I was not here the day it happened. I had no idea what happened, but I dealt with this for like, I want to say at least a month before the incident even happened. And I was working with TMT, or trying to, I mean, emailing TMT saying, hey, this is the person I want Freddie Nelson here to pick up our flag pallets. They're trash to us. We don't ever do a, an official business um, like contract. Okay. But we do try to find someone who can come and pick up our pallets. So that's, what, that, 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 that's the gist of what I was trying to get TMT to authorize, because I know we've been rounds of security here saying we can't have anybody back here. I'm like, well, you're impacting my business, because I really need these picked up. I had emailed TMT in a week later I emailed him saying look we're having issues with Freddie and the security group because whatever you know I have no idea and every time I dealt with them they were, they were seriously over aggressive with Freddie because he was literally just standing there with me and I was having a business conversation with him uh-huh. and they, they, would, they would just zoom up and be like you have to get off this property right now bye. and I'm like you know hey we're just trying to get this resolved and Every single time, Ryan, I was like, why are you guys just attacking this guy? Yeah. I and don't understand. There was no formal agreement. It was just sort of like you had identified Correct. Freddy as a person that you were willing to let um, take the pallets from the back of the store. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's sort of your responsibility in some way is to manage the, the pallets not being there anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I manage all the trash here. <laughs> and how many times do you think that you were with Freddie uh, when Cornerstone Security had contacted him? At least three times. Did you tell them that it was fine for him to be there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I told him, I said, no, you have to understand, I'm working with Freddie. I have been working with Freddie. I've done, the, you know, before they, this all happened, before the first, even the first interaction with them. In her interview, Lori also added this. Was there ever an issue with Freddie stealing pallets from you guys that you know of? No. Okay, no. so you've never... You Absolutely would never... not. Every time I authorized him to take the ones that were... Because he was there. And I'm like, hey, can you just take these 30? We started getting on to him about it. Like, you know, you're trespassed. You're supposed to leave. And so what he would do is he would just come, to, come on our property and sit in his car and just, like, just puddle around. Because he knows he's not supposed to be there, but we can't do anything when he's in his car. We've never had 
and not even a piece of paper saying we've been trespassed. We've never had a date of when we've been trespassed. We have no idea when we've been trespassed. It's unclear if Freddy had actually been given a formal trespass order. Regardless, Logan explained his version of events for the day of the shooting. I was driving by. I saw his car pull onto our property, so I go over there and like, hey man, you need to leave. You know you're not supposed to be here. Like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you. He gets out of his car. I get out of my, turn my camera on, get out of my passenger side, or my driver's side door. I was like, you know, turn around, put your hands behind your back. You know you're not, you know you've been trespassed, you know you're not supposed to be. And he like looked at me and was pretty much like, you. He pulled in front of us and like blocked us. He told us that we have to get off the property. And who is he? The security guy. Do you know his name? No. Can you describe him for me? He has dark hair. He's an asshole. We've had quite a few runs with him. And I call him an asshole. And then I'm calling the cops because I'm sick of this bullshit with you guys. You guys are harassing us all the time. And he said, I'm going to mace you. Freddy got out of the car. And um, he said, put your hands behind your back. Freddie said, yeah, right. And got back in the car and um, grabbed his mace. But if he would have just gotten into his car and just left, I would have I would have left it at that. Investigators asked Logan to clarify why the situation escalated so quickly. He was reaching for something inside. Okay. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I know that he's made threats against us multiple times before, and I didn't want him pulling a firearm when I was by the side of the vehicle, so that's why I sprayed into it. Okay. And what was your hope to do when you, I mean, what was your intent when you sprayed in there? Um, what were you? Protect my safety. Okay. Like I said, I didn't, cars are dangerous. Did Freddie have a weapon on him? I'm just asking because I need to ask. Yeah, he had his mace, but I don't think he had a chance to even fire it. So Freddie had some pepper spray as well? Yeah. Did he have a, a knife or a gun or anything like no. that? No, no. The main points of contention were the brief moments before Logan fired, and this time when he tells the story, he includes something new. And I was going to step like towards my car this way so he could, I, I thought he was just gonna drive yeah. uh, this way. So I start walking this way, he angles the hood of the car towards me, trying to pin me in between his, his truck and my patrol vehicle, but I stepped to my right and he narrowly missed. You said he angled his tires towards you. He, yeah, he turned the whole car and went forward towards me. And um, you were able to step out of the way and avoid being hit mm -hmm. or were you hit by the car? I think, I, I don't know, I think he might have like tabbed my hip okay. or like got, like I felt something push up against my hip, but no damage was done to me. Okay. I, I got out of the way quick enough. Yet at the scene, Logan clearly states something that contradicts his new story. You already tried to hit me once! Did your vehicle strike the security guard at any point? No. I don't think, How? I don't think so, I know. <laughs> no. While it's unclear if Freddy's truck actually hit Logan, he can be seen in the footage briefly touching the vehicle with his hand when it nears him. However, the most important piece of Logan's story was something he mentioned quickly in interrogation. Like I heard the engine start to rev and then that's when I fired. Okay, four shots into the left side or right side. Despite his claim the engine revved, the truck doesn't seem to move before Logan fired. At the very least, Logan's first shot was almost simultaneous with the truck beginning to move. Get the f out the vehicle now! You already tried to hit me once! You move this vehicle again, I will fire! Just walk me through what your concerns were because... My uh, personal safety? Yeah, 100%. Okay. It's, this job is not worth my life at $18 an hour. Sure. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I go home, but at the end of the day, I also don't want to have to send somebody else more or less in a home in a body bag. Notably, Cornerstone's use of force policy states that, quote, nothing in this policy requires an officer to retreat or be exposed to possible physical injury before applying reasonable force. The autopsy revealed that Freddy was shot in the head, the left of his chest, his right shoulder, and in his thoracic vertebrae. He died at the scene. Were you scared? Were you, um, or were you, I wouldn't really say I was scared, but be, that's only simply because of my, my military background and, sure. and all my training and stuff like that. While Logan had completed his armed security training through DPSST, Oregon's Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, 
he didn't have formal certification as an armed security guard. This meant that he was not licensed to carry a firearm at the time of the shooting. The Cornerstone Security Group later admitted that along with Logan, two more of their security guards weren't certified but were carrying firearms. Logan wasn't charged for Freddie Nelson's death until December 2021, more than six months after the shooting. At trial, Logan claimed it was self-defense and that after the truck struck him, he got tunnel vision and didn't have the ability to recognize an alternative action to deadly force. Logan was eventually found guilty of second-degree murder, unlawful use of a weapon, and two counts of second-degree unlawful use of mace. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Following this, Kerry Nelson filed a $25 million civil lawsuit for wrongful death and negligence against the owners of the property and Cornerstone Security Group. It appears the case is still ongoing.